This little device will actually fix the autofocus issues that you have with Panasonic cameras. Yo, so as a lot of you know, I've been shooting with this little Panasonic GH3 a lot recently. Now, the main reason for that is actually because I sold my Olympus cameras. Now, you might be thinking, why? I loved my Olympus cameras for what they were. My EM1 Mark II had great autofocus, great 4K image. The little EM10 Mark III that I had gave a great 4K image as well, and it was really small and compact. For some reason, I just wasn't really feeling like I wanted to stick with the Olympus system, especially because Olympus is now OM, and the whole Olympus brand is kind of just dying out. So there are newer OM cameras that are coming out, but it just doesn't seem like they're really competing in the market when it comes to being a film filmmaker's camera. But as you know, I picked up a Panasonic GH3 back in the end of summer to use as a B cam. Now, I really like this camera because it's a great 1080p image. I've talked about this camera a lot, but what I kind of wanted to do was to show you how I've been using this as my main camera until I figure out a different camera to buy. <laughs> So one of the biggest advantages to me having the Olympus EM1 Mark II was having that great autofocus so that I could do talking head type stuff like this and I didn't have to worry if I was in focus. But this little device will actually fix the autofocus issues that you have with Panasonic cameras. So how does this fix autofocus? Well, continuous autofocus on cameras like my Panasonic GH3 is not gonna be great. Even cameras like the GH6 still lack when it comes to autofocus. But single point autofocus still works pretty well with Panasonic cameras. So what I've actually done is I have used face detection autofocus, but only single point. So it's not gonna be continuous, right? And then I just have a simple shutter release and half pressing the shutter grabs focus. So I can come closer to my camera, press this, and it will catch my face and get my face in focus. And it works really well. And as long as I don't move too much, this is a really effective way for me to be away from my camera, but still make sure that I'm in focus. So again, I can come back here, half press, and it'll find my face. So this little wireless shutter release is only like 20 bucks. And it's a really simple solution to make sure that you're in focus when you're away from your camera. You're obviously gonna need an autofocus lens in order for this to work. If you have a manual focus lens, it's really not gonna be an option. And I know that a lot of Panasonic cameras, you can use the app to set your focus, but a lot of the times I don't like having to pull my phone out and use that to set my focus. If my phone is dead, then I'm basically out of luck. This just takes a couple AAA batteries and it'll last for a really long time. So I would definitely recommend going and picking up one of these little wireless shutter remotes if you have a Panasonic camera with bad autofocus. Good autofocus is coming soon into these Micro Four Thirds cameras, which I'm stoked on. So let's talk about another piece of gear that I use to hack these older and cheaper cameras. Keep in mind, all the gear that I'm going to be talking about in this video can be used on basically any camera. I just happen to have a GH3, and so that's why I'm using it. But something that you'll see in newer, more expensive cameras like the GH5 or a lot of the Sony and Canon cameras is an XLR adapter. And that's really useful if you want to use XLR style mics like this little dynamic mic that I'm using right now, which is also the mic that I use for my podcast. And shameless plug, if you haven't checked out my podcast yet, I'll leave that in the description below. So how do you get an XLR microphone like this plugged into an older camera like the GH3? Well, the way I'm doing it is I'm just using a really cheap Nikama XLR adapter. The really cool thing about this XLR adapter is that it takes a nine volt battery so it can provide phantom power if your mic needs it. This dynamic mic doesn't, but I also super glued a hot shoe onto this XLR adapter. So it's allowed me to put it onto my camera rigs a lot more efficiently. So for only like 20 to 25 bucks, plus the cost of that hot shoe, you can get a really effective XLR adapter to get some really nice sounding audio into your older cheap camera. So yeah, I got the GH3 body here with the little half cage. I'm gonna put my dummy battery right into the GH3. And then with the Arca Swiss plate, I'm just gonna attach 
the GH3 right to this 15 millimeter rod. So the next thing I'm gonna need is a lens and I have these new Mike cinema lenses to try out and I'm really stoked to start shooting with these. So this is the 35 millimeter T2.2. So to power this camera, I actually have one of these new little batteries from Small Rig. This is the Small Rig VB50 and it's such a small, tiny little V mount and it's gonna fit right on to this Small Rig V mount plate. Now I can plug in my dummy battery. I just kind of have my monitor and my mic kind of live on this top handle, slide it on. And the monitor that I'm actually using on top is my trusty OCT5 Plus. And what's kind of cool is that it can actually accept USB-C power. Plug that into the USB-A right there. And now I've got an entire rig built out for the GH3. So yeah, as you can see, even though this is an old camera, you can still rig it out to at least look the part and kind of fix some of the problems that you know old cameras like this GH3 has. You can run this camera for a really long time using this really cool small rig V-mount battery. This is the VB50. It's just a small little tiny battery attached to this small rig V-mount plate. And it's all resting on a small rig 50 millimeter rod system. Yeah, you can still rig these older cameras out. It is a little bit harder because because you do have to find parts that'll fit older cameras like this GH3, which can be pretty tricky. So something that a lot of older cameras lack is internal image stabilization. And that's something that when I had the Panasonic G85, the GX85, the Olympus EM1 Mark II and EM10 Mark III, having image stabilization in those cameras was great, but for the longest time, I may do perfectly fine without it. So if you do have an older camera that doesn't have stabilization, or maybe you have a Canon camera with a digital stabilization that doesn't work so good, I would definitely recommend picking up an optically stabilized lens. So there's a bunch of different options for Sony, Canon, Micro Four Thirds, if you're on Micro Four Thirds like me, the Panasonic 12 to 35 is great. There's a lot of other cheaper optically stabilized lenses, but this one is gonna give you the best image quality. So yeah, it'll definitely depend on which camera system you have, but I would definitely recommend looking into an optically stabilized lens to have in your kit when you do wanna do some of those handheld shots. But another option, if you're really serious about getting smooth motion in your videos, is obviously to get a gimbal. Now, the one that I've been using for years is the original DJI Ronin SC. This one is great because it can handle the small cameras that I typically use, like this Panasonic GH3, but it can handle a GH5 or any of the Sony a7S style cameras. And yeah, this one can be had for around 150 to like 200 bucks. There are some other options from Feutech and Zhuin, but I really like this DJI Ronin SC because it's super cheap and it's really easy to balance, which is a big thing for me. So at the end of the day, filmmaking really is just problem solving. So in this scenario, having a older or inferior camera is the problem. And hopefully some of the tools that I mentioned in this video could be the solution for you. But having a lot of cool gear doesn't really mean that much if you don't know how to use it. And that's something that I'm always talking about here on my YouTube channel is don't just worry about the gear that you have, really worry about whether or not you can actually use it to its best abilities. And there's actually one more bonus piece of gear that I wanna tell you about. And it's actually this really cool thing.